This is Kevin Harlan, and beside me, Greg Anthony and Steve Smith. David Aldridge joins us on the sideline. And checking out Utah's opening lineup, we've got Kelly Olenek. Dunn is out there with Clarkson. Then there's Markinen, and it's Collins in at the small forward. And for Oklahoma City, Williams is out there with Williams. Then there's Shea Gilgis-Alexander. Then there's Holmgren, and it's Mann in at the point. Well, we expect to see Sparks flying down in the paint tonight. Greg, a couple of very talented centers matching up head-to-head -head in this one. And But with the way the game is played today, you know, we could see them battling at the arc. Modern bigs make their presence felt now all over the floor. It'll be the Thunder off the tip. Some nice passing by Oklahoma City here. Pass to Gilgis Alexander. Williams looking around. And it's blocked. And he gets it back. Here's Holmgren. And three chances on that possession. But they just couldn't find a way to score. Three straight misses to begin this contest. And already starting to look frustrated. Now, here's Markinen. Defense is right there. Shot by Collins, no good. The Thunder have gone 0 of 3 from the field to start the game. Right side, Williams. Over Collins. And again, no good by Oklahoma City. Oh, my God. They can't buy one. 0 for 4. Sometimes this happens. Back to Clarkson. Down low. Olenek against Williams. And the basket by Olenek. I thought Olenek got hit on the release. But at his size, he just absorbed it. Outside, Gilgis Alexander. Passes it to Williams. Fires for three. And he's good on the three ball. And the lid comes off the basket. After four straight misses, they finally get one. And in the first, a little over a minute and a half in. And the pass to Markinen. Out to Clarkson. He can't hit that time. And it's Oklahoma City the other way. Their last game, a win against the Lakers, looking to carry it into this one. Yeah, and, and in that game, you see how they built out this roster, acquiring role players who can step up when needed. And a strong bench gives you the flexibility to bring someone in and exploit a certain matchup. Oh, big time put back there. What a great motor on this guy. There is no one who goes after those rebounds harder. Master right Olenek. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. You know, one thing Greg the Thunder have done a great job drafting international players. Players like Serge Ibaka, Steven Adams in the past. A few good ones on this current roster as well. Credit the OKC scouts for just finding guys all over the world. Shoot two. And the first one at the line is good. And you know there aren't many teams with a more dedicated fan base than Utah. The Jazz fans are behind their team no matter what. And so Olenek nails both of them. It's always striking, Greg, to see the bond between the Jazz team and their followers. Well, when you're the only game in town, people take the team to heart. And we see it in cities like Portland and San Antonio as well. The fans form that attachment to their team. Here's Mann. He averages a bit over six points a game. Just three to shoot. They get it back. Here's Holmgren. The second effort. And it's Williams laying it in. Good way to start this game. You want to get him rolling as early as possible. And we know once he gets in the rhythm, he's a really tough guy to stop. Now, here's Collins. He's playing a pretty big role for him at the offensive end, averaging about 12 and a half points a game. Olenek finds Clarkson. Lays it up and in on the nice reverse. 
And savvy inside play by Clarkson, getting himself a look right at the basket. And that outstanding drive and finish brought to you by Mobile One. And that's what a coach loves to see in a close game. Just put your head down and make something happen. Here's Mann. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Williams can't hit. It can be a little disheartening when you do everything right and come away with nothing. Dunn looking over the floor. Kicks it to Olenek. Over Williams. It's deflected. Pass to Williams. Gilgis Alexander against Clarkson. And Greg Anthony for Shea Gilgis Alexander. Part of a growing trend in this NBA. Giving his team length in the backcourt. Yeah, 6'6 six, six with a 6'11 wingspan. He can see over the top of the defense. He helps you on the glass, and he can switch on to front court players defensively. That's what teams are looking for nowadays. The first free throw is good. You know, as the regular season, Greg, winds down, you can feel things start to change around the league, can't you? Yeah, I mean, some teams are getting totally in the zone for the playoffs, while other squads are using this time to plan for next year and try to figure out what went wrong. And that's another area where he is just a superb player. Excellent at the free throw line. Done outside. In the corner, Collins with it. And Collins gets double teamed. Markinen and Holmgren pulls it down. Holmgren's got four rebounds now tonight. Man can't hit. Jazz trail by three. Right side, Markinen. Done outside. Goes up on the wing. And it's Shea Gilgis Alexander with the rebound. Pass to Williams. And the rejection by Collins. Excellent feel and timing. Collins does a good job of protecting the rim. Dunn passes to Markinen. And the rebound goes to the Thunder. Holmgren's got rebound number five here tonight. On the wing, Gilgis Alexander. And he lobs it up toward the rim. And the dunk by Holmgren. Oh, phenomenal alley-oop slam there. They are taking advantage of a team that looks lost out there. Timeout is called first of the game for the Jazz. Their last game, a win against San Antonio, looking to carry that into this one. And, and the focus was to get stops. All game, they were right up on shooters, and that led to some big-time rejections. This was their game plan going in. Make shooters uncomfortable by challenging every possible shot. Now, here's Dunn. He's coming off a 10-point game against San Antonio. And not only was he creating for himself, he was setting up teammates with good shots. Here's Holmgren. It's a five-point game. Trains the three-pointer. Williams has got six. That's just great court recognition there. He saw the D pack in the lane on the break, so he calmly rolls up and drained the transition three. Count that one. This is Dunn's game. Terrific acceleration. Very hard to stay in front of. Oklahoma City leading by six. Mann passes to Williams. Here's Mann. To the wing right side. Holmgren wide open. And again, Oklahoma City with the triple. Oh, great ball movement there. And here's Dunn. He'll bring it up for the Utah Jams. He kicks it to Collins. There's the pass to Clarkson. Just five to shoot. Arkin in with it. Williams picks him up. John misses. They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. On the wing, Gilgis Alexander. He's covered by Clarkson. 
Here's Williams, and the basket is good, and he's got a chance here for one more at the line. Yeah. We're seeing some fireworks from them already. They established the pace. They made shots. This is why they're way out in front. And what do you guys think so far about the offensive approach for Oklahoma City? Well, in my opinion, the way the three has been falling for them here early on, you have to think they'll keep firing away. And on top of that, they've been asserting themselves offensively, getting a good chunk of their points from inside. And that one misses. Anytime you watch the Jazz, you have to think back to those great Utah teams of the 80s and 90s. They easily could have won a few rings. Here's Abaji. Pass to Yurtsevin. And here's Sexton. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Maybe even more than a few. And Smitty, it seems hard to believe those Jazz didn't win a title or two. Kevin, well, if it wasn't for a player named Michael Jordan, they probably would have. Those Stockton, Malone Jazz teams ran into Jordan twice in the finals when he was at the peak of his career. Free throw good, Sexton. And how about the explosiveness of Sexton? A crafty floor general who is consistent in how hard he attacks the defense. And the Thunder making a change here. Oladipo's checked in. Here's Joe. Pass to Robinson Earl. A three-pointer no good. Jazz trail by nine. Here's Horton Tucker. Marvelous lead pass, and he throws it down. Smart decision. Horton Tucker has a good feel for the game. Oladipo, the pass to Dort. Back to Oladipo. Oklahoma City moving it around. Now, here's Holmgren. He's defended by Yurtsevin. Missing that one helps out all the analytical guys from the mid-range. Sexton, the pass to Horton Tucker. Here's Abaji, guarded by Oladipo. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Such a menace close to the rim. You got to respect Sexton's fearlessness when he's amongst the bigs. Okashevsky's checked in for Oklahoma City. And Sexton drops them both. The Thunder leading by five. To the paint. Here's Pokushevsky. Outside, Dort. Passes to Oladipo. On deep. Rebound, Utah. The defense got lucky there. That's one you expect him to drain. Now, here's Sexton. D right on him. Good saving. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. Sexton has to just keep developing his court awareness. You, you want to see more passing from him. They've been looking out of sorts in the last few possessions. And this is when you need to be patient. Find a high percentage shot and have some floor balance. Here's Pakrushevsky. Taking a look at the scoring numbers right now, he averages about nine points a game. That's tipped, and they get it back. Now, here's Sexton. He's been producing a fair amount of offense night in and night out as he's averaging 14 points a game. Here's Abaji. And there's the pass to Yurtsevin. The Jazz need to get off a shot here. Got a hand on it. Quite simply, Lugor is an elite defender. Plays hard, smart, great wingspan, which we just saw him use there. Glad we got the chance to see that remarkable rejection. And that is a huge block, given how close this game is. A stop like that was right on point. Oklahoma City leading by three. 
Joe passes to Robinson Earl. Deflects the pass all by himself. Pass to Sexton. Here's Abaji. Guarded by Oladipo. Pass to Horton Tucker. Five to shoot. Fires from deep. The putback controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. And that one gives them a plus five rebound advantage, Kevin. There's 138 left here in the first quarter. Passes it to Joe. Back to Oladipo. They could use a bucket. The shot will not fall. So Utah will take it the other way. Last time they met was in Utah. You guys, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out, though. If you're going to shoot in the low 30s, you're going to end up losing a lot of games. They couldn't hit a thing out there. With that awful shooting percentage, you will be lucky to win one game in this league. So it's the Jazz now. Victor Oladipo unable to get his last shot to go. That one falls. Six points for him. Effort play, pursuing the basketball. Love how he puts in the work. Outside, Dort. The pass to Oladipo. Pass to Robinson Earl. Denied for the third time. He's 0 for 3. And so, Sexton will bring it up for Utah. Love the enthusiasm from Horton Tucker. Saw the opening and went for it. Thunder trailing by three. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. And it goes down two points. Really well done there. Just confident and composed. Never in a hurry. Utah has gone 0-3 three from three-point land. Nothing yet going outside. And here's Sexton. Nine points last game. Six to shoot. On the top of the key. Tries again. And he makes the bucket, gets the whistle. And now a three-point play chance here for him. And that's a lesson for the D. Fight harder on the glass. Reason why, lack of focus, lack of communication, which led to second chance points. The Jazz shooting their seventh attempt at the foul line in this one. And we reach the end of the first quarter. Utah out in front, up four. And we'll get the second quarter underway on the other side of the spring. And if you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter in this one. And the guys, what's your take on Utah so far? Stingy on the defensive end in that first quarter. They were just getting up into people. Yeah, they were very physical and very aggressive. They've just been the better team so far. Clarkson with the ball. He's coming off a 10-point game against San Antonio. So on the floor for Utah. Dunn is out there with Clarkson. Then it's Collins. Then there's Markinen. Up again. Great positioning on the putback. And the Jazz lead by six. Yeah, just a fantastic job to stay with the play and just not give up. Excellent effort on the offensive backboard. Gilgis Alexander kicks to Holmgren. Gilgis Alexander passes to Dort. Oklahoma City moving it around. No good that time. 
some solid defense from Clarkson. Done outside. Inside, Markkinen, and Markkinen throws it down. What I like is when Chris Dunn keeps his poise, keeps his eyes up, good things happen. Second quarter of basketball, about one minute played so far. And Markkinen can give you, Greg, a solid defensive effort at both the three and the four. And Kevin, many thought Markkinen was a defensive liability. But given credit, worked hard to prove he wasn't. And while not a superb defender, he has become a plus defender for this team. A shot by Clarkson, no good. That's a surprise. I mean, really out of character for him to miss when the defense is not right up on it. Left side, Gilgis Alexander. Shot clock at six. Let's a floater go, and the layup is up and in. He's efficient, low turnover rate. Shea is more than capable of running the show. That was the 2K drive. Has that move deserved another look? It's all about the ability to get two feet in the paint, whether it's creating for a teammate or for yourself. Now, here's Clarkson. Here's Dunn. It's deflected, and he recovers it from the arc. A shot by Clarkson, no good. Not quite enough defense. That time around, just lucky he was off. Dort misses. There was a mix-up defensively. Left him all alone. He just couldn't hit it. To the middle, here's Collins. And finish off by Collins. John Collins is one of those guys, when he leaves the floor, he just keeps going up. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Now, here's Gilgis Alexander. He picked up 18 points in their last one against the Lakers. Clarkson against Dort. To the left side wing. Left side, Collins. Over Williams. Collins, good. Collins has got the lead up to 10 now for the Jams. Terrific move by Collins. An emerging big man who's still reaching his potential. Loads it up there for Gilgis Alexander. And so Oklahoma City again turning it over. Yeah, just not on the same page. Unfortunate, wasted possession. Kenrich Williams, he's checked in for Dorch. Olenek, he's checked in for Utah. Jazz leading by 10. Dunn outside. He dishes it to Collins. And with the rebound. The Thunder have gotten only one of their first four shots in the second quarter to drop. And now the latest from our reporter, David Alder. Thanks, guys. Well, the Thunder are trying to build something that will last. The front office says you stick to your principles, your values, and you think long-term. We're focused on building a sustainably great team. We continue to be forward-facing in that respect. Kevin, back to you. It's a good philosophy, and they're not looking for any shortcuts, which is admirable. David, thanks. Now, here's Clarkson. Here's Markkinen. And yes, it's good. One of the surprises with Markkinen is how physical he can be. He's willing to mix it up. And first time out of the game called for Oklahoma City. Well, great, we see it every year. Those overachieving teams in the NBA. What enables them to be greater than the sum of their parts? Well, listen, luck can play a part, but confidence is a huge factor as well. If you walk into that gym every night believing you'll find a way to win, oftentimes you do. And it's the Thunder with the ball. A 12-point game. Williams. Here's Holmgren. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. It's on Lowry Markkinen. And really the defense fouling there to, to prevent the layup, but that's exactly what you need to do. All right, we'll take a look now at how the points have been generated so far. A scoring breakdown for Utah. Right out of the gates, they've been in attack mode. And I think that's by design because it has been relentless. And they've also done a great job converting their opportunities at the strike. Lots of chances and making the most of them. 
That free throw, no good. A unique type of player, Chet with great length and skill, but the keys to reaching his potential will be durability and improving his strength. And he's good on the second. Hey, Greg Holmgren is thin, but as we both know, he's very tough. He's aggressive and willing to take contact at both ends. He's also strong mentally. Can't wait to see what the future holds for this young man. Now, here's Clarkson. Collins kicks to Clarkson. Six on the shot clock. Arkinen passes to Clarkson. Shoots over Gilgis Alexander. They get the rebound. Markkinen, good. Markkinen's got six here in this quarter. And now you see them starting to really work the ball inside. And Gilgis Alexander's got the ball here for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Trailing by 13. Williams passes to Williams. Utah with the rebound. And his pure defensive effort changed that shot from an easy one to a tough one. And you know, technically, it's a high percentage look. But this is why we play the game. Now, here's Markinen. He's got six. Dunn misses. Outside, Williams fires the three. And they recover it. Wow, another opportunity. Just everything going their way. Pretty much the story of this game. And, and didn't do anything fancy there, but didn't need to. Nope, he, his only concern right now is getting the points on the board. And I, I don't mean style points. Here's Dunn. Taking a look at his stats, he's averaging around 7.5 points a game. Unloads. Clarkson. That's in. Coming off an assist from Dunn. Dunn's got his third assist on the night. Thunder trailing by 13. Pass to man. Now here's Williams. Here's the three. Rebound by Olenek. He's had a tough time getting it going. And he's put this team behind the eight ball. Dunn outside. Right wing. Collins against Williams. Shoots. And Olenek with the slam. The hustle, the energy. It's why Olenek is out here. Great work. And a look at the mobile one drive. Driving right into your living room. Yeah, and even up big, still playing the right way. Keeping that aggressive nature and attacking the rim time called here the thunder decides to talk it over yeah just looking to tighten up their defense in the paint they've gotta be better it's a matter of want to helping out contesting shots you have to want to make the effort and oklahoma city making a change here oladipo's checked in then for the jazz horton Zucker comes in for jordan clarkson and it's sexton in for dunn gil just alexander passes to oladipo and the shot goes in Oladipo's got his first points of the night. Yeah, this is light work for Oladipo. Uh, if the D doesn't force him out of that area, they're done. Here's Horton Tucker. He gets that one. And the Jazz lead by 15. They're scoring boatloads of buckets. It's raining buckets from inside. Collins against Oladipo. Got a piece of it. Marketing with the nice block shot. His size has been a factor in this game. And that's the battle they haven't been winning today. Their work on the glass has been porous, and that's got to change. Doesn't go for him. Oklahoma City's gone 0-3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. He was all alone on that one. Oladipo's got his second bucket of the night. Well, opponents worry about Oladipo's quickness attacking the basket, which really helps him create good looks from the perimeter. Now, here's Sexton. Right side, Collins. Passes it to Markinen. Wants to get it to Collins and does. And denied, he sends it right off the glass. Williams against Collins. A wide open look here for Oladipo. Good, and it's Williams who picks up the assist. 
coming off a scoreless first quarter. He's found a little rhythm here. Here's Horton Tucker. His last outing, he had eight points. Outside, Markinen. Dishes it to Sexton. Olenek trying to break loose. And Sexton slams it in. This is what they like about marketing. He will make the next pass when the defense overplays him. Thunder trailing by 12. Outside, Gilgis Alexander. The pass to Oladipo. Some nice passing by Oklahoma City here. And Jalen Horton Tucker is going to pick up the foul. That's his first foul. And really, these are some of the toughest calls an official has to make. With the drive, and he drops in the layup off the glass. That's a well-timed, well-coordinated play. Comes right off the pick for the lay-in. Here's Horton Tucker. He averages about uh, five points a game. Over to the wing. Olenek trying to break loose. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. Tenacious play by Horton Tucker. Really earned that whistle. He's getting his first free throw attempt of the night right now. Yeah, he's averaging 80% from the line, and he has been as steady as they come at the strike. free throw is good. Gordon Tucker is a scorer. Someone that tries to give his team a joke of energy. And Utah making a change here. That one misses. Thunder trailing by 11. On its way from Oladipo for two. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. An active shooter. When Oladipo takes charge like this and looks to score, this guy is capable of living at the free throw line. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. And to this point on the season, guys, 80% from the line. He's done a really good job. And he can't get the first one. The combination of shooting and speed Oladipo provides this team is invaluable. And his hunger to keep getting better, also impressive. Dort, he's checked in for Oklahoma City. Good on the second free throw. Utah calls timeout. Jazz leading by 10. Now Sexton. He has six. Pass to Horton Tucker. In the corner. Collins with it. Let's it go from 14. Kuzevsky grabs the miss. Holmgren kicks to Dort. Here's Joe. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. That one on Collins. For Oklahoma City, they have shot four of seven as a team from the line tonight. Several misses earlier. First one falls for him. Yeah. 
No good on the second, so he hits one of two. Jazz leading by nine. Sexton with it. Dort covering. Good save. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. That one on Dort. For Utah, they have knocked down eight of nine free throw attempts. I'd say those numbers read pretty well. And they shot the ball well this season in, in, in terms of their attempts. 81%. Shooting two. And he knocks down the first one. Both shots good from the strike. And here's Oladipo. He'll bring it up for Oklahoma City. Outside, Dort. Here's Joe, defended by Sexton. Here's Pakusevsky. That shot is off. The Jazz go the other way with it. Here's Horton Tucker. He has five. It's good. Now he's shooting six for seven. I mean, he's just been brilliant today, guys. And it was the same exact story last time out. Joe passes to Dort. Here's Joe, defended by Sexton. Joe can't get it to go. Jazz leading by 13. 102 left to play here in the second quarter. Sexton, the pass to Yurtsevin. Sexton with it. Dort covering. The offensive rebound. Oh, great defense there. Anticipated the play and got Go there basket. first. Robinson Earls checked in for the Thunder. Oklahoma City's gone one of four from three-point range in the second. Not a whole lot dropping out there for them. There's 42 seconds left in the first half of basketball. The kick out to Oladipo. They grab their own miss. They shoot again. Here's Robinson Earl. Oh, that's blocked. And it's out of bounds. Oklahoma City able to retain possession here. And it's out of bounds. The Thunder able to retain possession. And he jumped out to that ball immediately. Great reaction on that deflection. A little bit late there, but you try to get into your opponent's head. Force them to go somewhere else with the ball, and he did that. Now, here's George. 17 points for him last game against the Lakers. And his struggles continue. Just still scoreless and, and just can't seem to take the lid off. He's kind of lost his way this period, having a hard time getting anything to go down. The will is there, but the execution is lacking. He can't seem to finish plays this quarter. You know, and he's not a pass-first point guard, but Sexton's putting the work in, uh, trying to raise the bar as a distributor. And that concludes the first half. Jazz lead by 15. We'll get right back to the action when we return. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome back to 2K Sports, everybody. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. Let's talk about that first half. Utah found themselves in a close game in the first. And trying as they might, they couldn't push their lead past four points. They just exploded in the second quarter, grabbing the momentum and running with it. Basket after basket, and they played stingy defense. Now they've got a halftime lead that's going to be very difficult to erase. And, uh, Kenny, what'd you see out there from the Jazz? The main story here, their offensive rebounding. They've worked so hard for extra possessions, superior effort, and that's given them the upper hand. Paid off on the scoreboard. 
And now, Shaq, let's get your opinion on Oklahoma City. They really need to focus on finding quality shots. If they can't create for themselves in the second half, things will only get worse. And I'm talking about the high percentage looks, not contested threes. And that should do it. With the second half about to begin, let's send you back to Kevin Harlan. Go back to Kevin Harlan. Go. Just go over there. And as we dive into the second half, we'll find out if the next two quarters are any different from the first two. So far, it has been a runaway. Utah leading by 15. They've got Holmgren. Williams is out there with Williams. Then there's Shea Gilgis-Alexander. And it's Mann in at the one spot. And that's who Mark Dagnalt starts the second half with. Now, here's Yurtsevin. They lead by the biggest margin of the game, 15 points. Oh, and a fast break for Oklahoma City. Pass to Gilgis Alexander. A slight rebound advantage for them. One more column in their favor, and it's all adding up. And here's the fast break. Holmgren leading the way. Clearly a foul. Two shots, foul, two. The Thunder have gone five of nine at the line. And, and when you got a team percentage of about 81%, uh, you're going to be one of the Shoot elites two. in this league. The first one falls. The Jazz making a switch here. Oh, Linux checked in. Good on both. And Utah has possession. Here's Dunn, and that one goes out of bounds. Nice touch by Gilgis Alexander. And right now, let's watch that terrific swat. And that has got to help the morale of this team. Let's see if that sets up a run here. Collins in the post. He's against Williams. Collins, good. Collins has got six. Not a lot of resistance on the inside, and they're taking full advantage. And that was another look at the fantastic Mobile One drive that happened a moment ago. And it's plays like that, Kevin, that show you why they are so far ahead. Didn't settle for anything outside and went right to the rim. Tries yet again, and it's blocked. Outside, Sexton. To the paint, it's Saban. And he makes no mistake on the slam dunk. Trying to attack the heart of that defense with great teamwork. Under trailing by 17. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. And let's head over to the sideline and catch up with David Alder. Thanks a lot, guys. Josh Giddy has been attracting admirers, including LeBron James. The King said... He's really, really good. He has a great pace about the game. Great vision. Josh is one of those kids who can definitely see the game a lot quicker than most guys out on the floor. And he's showing it. Just been playing beautiful basketball. Kevin, that's high praise. It is both amazing passes. David, thank you. Man gets the bucket. Finally, they get one to drop. That's one of their first four here in the third. This is a dual in it. Oh, and a fast break for Oklahoma City. Man can't hit. 
The struggle is real. He's been way off with his shot all evening long. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. And he's just good at forcing the issue. Love seeing Sexton stay aggressive and just get under the D's skin. For Utah, they have shot 10 of 11 at the line. Nice work so far for them. And the first one drops. Lowry Markinen's checked in for Yurtsevin. That one is no good. Thunder trailing by 16. Holmgren kicks to Gilgis Alexander. Williams against Dunn. And there's Williams. That's good on the assist from Williams. Williams has got 11 points. How can you leave this guy that wide open? Please. That's terrible. Dunn outside. Now the dish to Olenek. Markinen. It's good on the putback. And the Jazz lead by 15. For a stretch four who spends a lot of time on the perimeter, Markman does a good job attacking the offensive glass. Oh, he's going up for the alley-oop here. And what an alley-oop. Those two read each other so well. It's a play I'm sure they love to run. Jazz have gone three or five to start the second half, developing a nice rhythm out there. Dunn passes to Olenek. Kicks to Sexton. Driving inside. And Sexton slams it in. And with an excellent understanding of the game, Olenek is able to find open teammates. A little under two and a half minutes off the clock now here in the third. Williams passes to Gilgis Alexander. Oklahoma City moving it around. Shoots from the line. Again, Oklahoma City. And we always talk about making your teammate better. That assist was right on target. Jazz leading by 13. Done outside. The pass to Clarkson. He kicks it to Olenek. And it's done in the corner. Poke loose. Gilgis Alexander with the steal. And now here comes Williams leading the break. Stolen by Clarkson. For three, Olenek, that's in, coming off an assist from Dunn. Dunn's got four assists now tonight. For a big man, Olenek shoots it well, especially from downtown. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. The shot by Sexton, no good. It's amazing. All night, he's been out of sync on the offensive end, yet they continue to lead. Yeah, the defender all over him. Two shots. Foul. Two. For Oklahoma City, they have gone 7 of 11 from the line. Shooting two. And he makes the first. He hits both from the strike. And even though they're down, they are putting on a show. 
at the free throw line. And stolen by Williams. Plays it in off the breakaway. Williams has got 13. And there's that transition offense. Push the ball up the floor. The defense can't get set. And you can get some easy baskets here. And the Jazz call time here. Jazz leading by 12. Dunn kicks to Clarkson. Off target with his three. For Oklahoma City, they've gone even 5 of 10 on shot attempts in the third. Pass to Holmgren from downtown. And a great assist by Gilgis Alexander as that one goes in. Gilgis Alexander's got four assists in the game. Now, here's Dunn. Clarkson outside. To the inside. Olenek. And nothing is falling for him right now. And Kelly Olenek is going to pick up the foul. That's his third foul of the game. Thunder trailing by nine. Outside Williams. He lobs it up. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley-oop. Great job preventing that ball from coming into the post. Might have been an easy two if the defense wasn't there. Williams against Dunn. Larson outside. He'll just Alexander with the steal. A finish. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. And you can see Shea Gilgis Alexander thinking out there in a good way. He really studies every situation. And a moment here to take a look at Shoot some hustle two. stats for the Jazz. It's easy for me. Look at their defensive effort all game. The block total shows their commitment to contesting shots. And we also got to highlight how lackluster the opposition has been in terms of boxing out. This team is flat out bullying them on the offensive glass. And Utah making a change here. Horton Tucker's checked in. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Jazz leading by seven. And here is Dunn. Pass to Olenek. That's in, coming off an assist from Dunn. Olenek's got 11. The interior game of Kelly Olenek, capable of burning you from this area also. Back to Gilgis Alexander. Let's it go from 11. Markinen pulls it in. Markinen's got rebound number 12 here already in the game. Done outside. Down low. Here's Olenek. That savvy little up fake there. Fooling the D. Adding to this lead. He's been dependable and consistent at the offensive end. He's gone two for two at the line so far. One falls for Olenek. A physical big man who won't back down from anyone. Every team could use a guy like Kelly Olenek. Gilgis Alexander kicks to Dort. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the contact. And every year it seems like outcomes in the playoffs can hinge on health. Steve, it's part of the game as you well know. It is, Kevin, and we hate it because obviously health can change the direction of a series or a team. But the one thing teams are doing a better job is they are lengthening and going deeper into their bench.
And the first one at the line is good. Who needs the NBA draft? I mean, Dort worked his way onto the team, into the rotation, and then turns into a key contributor. And Oklahoma City making a change here. Joe's checked in. All three throws good from Dort. And the Jazz call time here. And they're picking up a lot of fouls already in the penalty. Not a good sign. They need to focus on moving their feet and maintaining a good defensive position. Utah leading by 10. Clarkson looking for an opening. Done with it. Pass to Horton Tucker. Six to shoot. Olenek trying to break loose. And it's Clarkson on the follow. Clarkson's got six points. And with the success they've had rebounding the basketball, they're right where you'd expect them to be, firmly in the driver's seat. Gilgis Alexander passes to Dort. Back to Gilgis Alexander. Here's Robinson Earl. Olenek is covering, and Jeremiah Robinson Earl picks up the foul. That's his third foul of the game. Utah has gone one of two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. Done outside. He dishes it to Clarkson. Banked in off the glass. Eight points for him. Oh, slick move by Clarkson. Getting around that inside contact to finish the shot. And Taylor Horton Tucker is going to pick up a foul. That's his third foul so far. Bonus situation in effect, so we'll head to the free throw line for two. He's had four chances at the line, made them all. And the free throw line was a problem spot for him in their last game. Take a really break. struggled Take a break. up there. Two shots. That's good from Gilgis Alexander. Okashevsky's checked in for Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Collins checked in for the Jazz. Gilgis Alexander hits them both. And here's Clarkson. He brings it up for the Utah Jam. 17 points was their biggest margin. And the pass to Horton Tucker. And Holmgren pulls it down. Holmgren's got rebound number 17, if you can believe that. And Kelly Olenek is going to pick up the foul. That will get him his fourth foul of the game, and due to the bonus, we'll head to the line for two. Three trips to the line so far for him in this one. And all you need to do is see his free throw percentage, guys. 90 for the season Shoot to know two. what kind of year he's having. No good on that one. And the Thunder making a switch here. Oladipo's checked in. It's the second from the line. Jazz leading by 11. Now Clarkson, eight points for him. Outside Collins. And Collins gets double teamed. It's rebounded by Oklahoma City. Holmgren's got his 18th rebound here tonight all over the place. 
Here's Collins, and he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. That one on Holmgren. As usual, beasting inside. John Collins puts defenders in no-win situations. And, and Collins is shown to be a game-changer on the floor. The, the problem for him has been staying on the floor. He has fought the injury bug his whole career. And that one falls for Collins. For Collins, he has yet to play close to a full slate of games, Greg, in a single season. Collins has missed time in each season he's played. He's young enough. A few years of good injury fortune can change the narrative. And let's just hope that's the case for his sake. And so Collins nails both of them. You know, when John Collins is being utilized correctly, he's a problem. A talented offensive player and solid defender. Now, here's George. A look at his stats. He averages a bit over eight points a game. He takes it in. The shot, no good. The Jazz go the other way with it. Collins in the post, guarded by Oladipo. It's good. No matter where he is on the floor, Collins seems to invite contact. Pass to Joe. Oladipo against Collins. Collins with some nice D. And it's the Jazz's ball. They're on a 13-5 run here. Horton Tucker, the pass to Collins. It's tipped. And here's the fast break. Holmgren leading the way. And Taylor Horton Tucker is going to pick up the foul. That will get him his fourth foul of the game. And due to the bonus, we'll head to the line for two. And it'll be his fourth time going to the free throw line in the game. Free throw drops for Holmgren. That one falls, so he hits both of them. Here's Clarkson. He's got eight. Got a hand on it. And now a fast break for the Thunder. Dort wide open. And again, Oklahoma City, no good. Jazz leading by 13. Clarkson passes to Horton Tucker. To the inside, Collins. And the rebound goes to the Thunder. Hakusevsky's got his fifth rebound in this one. George. And the layup falls. Such a gutsy competitor. Dort crashing the boards and looking unafraid to get physical. Utah has gone one and two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. Here's Horton Tucker, defended by Dort. Whistle blows. If that's going to be a travel. Yeah, they've gotten careless, Kevin. No doubt about it. With their turnovers in the second half. Williams, he's checked in for Oklahoma City, and Utah with a change here too. Sexton's checked in. Thunder trailing by 11. Here's Oladipo. Eight points for him. And the dunk by Holmgren. And when Oladipo makes passes like that, his team kicks into a whole new gear offensively. Sexton deciding where to go with it. To the left wing. Pocket six. Plenty of daylight on that shot. 
Horton Tucker's got 10 points. The quick release there for Taylor Horton Tucker. I love the consistency. Oladipo finds Dort. Back to Oladipo. There's the triple. The rebound by the Jams. 17 points was their biggest margin. Now eight seconds separating the two clocks. Horton Tucker, the pass to Collins. It's deflected. Oh, and a fast break for Oklahoma City. Here's Dort. That three off the mark. And out of bounds as the Jazz gain possession. Now, here's Sexton. He's got nine. Pass to Horton Tucker. With one on the clock. And he was able to put it up in time, but doesn't fall. And so it's Utah. Up by a dozen here at the end of the quarter. Their strategy has been clear tonight. Work the ball inside, get shots in the paint. And now they are scoring with ease. Back to the action in just a minute. And let's take this chance now to show you the State Farm assist of the game. Just true artistry right there. I mean, great decision on where to go with the ball. And how about the perfect delivery? Execution. This is what you practice every day. These guys are professionals. Beautiful play. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. So on the floor for Utah, they've got Sexton. He's out there with Chris Dunn. Collins is out there with Markinen. Meeting right at the rim. He typically converts in those situations. Not this time. Now here's Dunn. Victor Oladipo unable to get his last shot to go. Teardrop shot. Dunn misses. Trying to finish out the game strong. You have to recognize who has the hot hand and get him the ball. And with that, the Utah lead is cut down now to just 10 on the basket from man. Poor interior defense. If you play him soft, he's going to kill you. And on the AT&T 5G Slam Cam, you can see how impressive that move was. Done against Dort. Dort grabs the miss. Oklahoma City shooting only 31%. Their offense really struggling to put possessions together. And Collins has got the ball here for Utah. Passes to Markinen. There's the double team with Dort. The Jazz working the ball around now. Here's Collins. Basket number five goes in. He's now 5 of 12 from the floor. Talk about making halftime adjustments. You love what they're doing with him now offensively. Time called here. The Thunder decide to talk it over. And John Collins does just about everything you'd want your big man to do. Greg, what I like is he can shoot it from deep. He's still someone who is improving defensively. And he's a guy who wants to keep developing his overall game. For the Thunder, Kenrich Williams comes in for Victor Oladipo. And Shea Gilgis-Alexander subbed in for Dort. It's time now to hear from our Hall of Fame reporter, David Aldridge. That's the latest, David. Hey, guys, during the last break, here's what Mark Dagnall was telling his team. He is not happy with the sloppy play offensively. He said, make the easy play. Take care of the ball. We can't afford to just give away golden opportunities. And we'll see if they can clean it up, guys. All right, thank you, David. So it's Utah now, following the score by Oklahoma City. Back to Dunn. Driving in. Outside, Sexton. Five on the clock. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Wow, wow. 
he got whacked on that one. Shouldn't be much debate there. throw good Sexton Olenek he's checked in for the Jazz and Sexton drops them both here's Gilgis Alexander kicks it to Williams to Gilgis Alexander. Here's Mann. And here is Gilgis Alexander. Here's Holmgren. The shot comes out. Excellent D there from Markinen. Jazz leading by 12. Done outside. The feed to Olenek. That's in, coming off an assist from Dunn. Dunn's got his seventh assist in the game. Don't look now. Kelly Olenek's having a tremendous night scoring the ball, and you can tell he's pumped about it. Now, here's Holmgren. The pass to man. The shot. Offensive rebound. Another shot. And Holmgren finishes inside. Holmgren's got 14 points now in the second half. Efficient performance from him. Not the case for everyone else on his team. And Markinen throws it down. That gives him the double-double. 10 points and 14 rebounds. The ability to play inside out. The more Markinen attacks the rim, the more he creates opportunities for their perimeter game. And the jump by Holmgren. And maybe that'll trigger them. Impossible not to get pumped up after that. Yeah, well, you can see the immediate reaction of the guys in the bench. They are pumped up. Now, here's Collins. Pass to Olenek. In the corner, Collins with it. Williams with the block. Holmgren with it. Started now by Sexton. He gets it in there. This is what Shea excels at. Navigating shot blockers in the paint and finishing. Dunn passes to Markinen. And Markinen throws it down. And just tacks a few more points onto their lead with the Tomahawk. Ah, that's bringing it down hard. And that's a foul called on Colin Sexton. That's his first foul. And Utah making a change here. Clarkson's checked in. On defense, Utah. Here's Mann. He feeds it to Holmgren. Score the basket. His eighth. Eight for 13 from the floor. So much sharper. So much more efficient with this shot this half. Just taking what the defense allows. And it's done penetrating. Gilgis Alexander with the steal. All going up court. Shots good by Williams. And this is Gilgis Alexander's responsibility to find his guys when they're open. Jazz leading by eight. Done with it. Outside, marking it. Archon outside. Six on the shot clock. He kicks to Olenek. Pass to Dunn. Holmgren with the steal. On the wing, Gilgis Alexander. He's covered by Clarkson. Here's Williams. And that one is off. And Utah will come the other way. Here's Collins. That's in. Coming off an assist from Dunn. Dunn's got assist number 10 tonight with that last one. Thunder trailing by 10. 
outside Williams. Passes it to Mann. Oklahoma City gets it back. And that's a good job of just getting after it on the backboard. Gets them another possession and allows them to run even more clock. Now, here's Clarkson at the done. Drives to the hoop. Again with the block. A, a defensive stalwart so far. That's six blocks. Greg protecting the rim. Love the hustle. Jazz leading by ten. Kicks it to Clarkson. And Jordan Clarkson is going to pick up the foul. That's foul number two for him. I don't get it. He was so efficient in the first half. Zero turnovers. But since the break, he's been a disaster. Stolen by Clarkson. Out to the wing. Fires from the corner. Goes back up. Markinen can't get it to go. And so it's Williams who brings it up for Oklahoma City. Gildas Alexander passes to Williams. Can't hit from in close. The Jazz have gone 5 of 11 from the field in the fourth quarter. Done outside. Count the bucket. And he's got a free throw coming up as well. Free throw good from Markinen. Incredible touch for a big man. Markinen shows it both in the field and at the line. And Jordan Clarkson is going to pick up the foul. And that'll be his third foul so far. Here's Mann. Done covering. At the elbow, William. Inside, And with that shot, the Jazz lead is cut down now to just 11 on the basket from Mann. For Utah, they've gone 6 of 12 from the field here in the fourth and even 50%. Now done. Left side, Markinen. Back to Dunn. Looking to get back on track here. And the layup is good. One of the stronger point guards we have, Chris Dunn, often does his best work. In the paint. And there's the pass to Mann. Takes a three. And a great assist by Gilgis Alexander as that one goes in. Gilgis Alexander's got six assists here tonight. Utah leading by ten. Larson outside. Feeds to Olenek. And oh, what a play. He just palms the block. On the wing, Gilgis Alexander. Done covering the eight-footer. Here's Holmgren. Had a chance there to cut it to single digits, but it's off target. For Utah, they've gone through the fourth quarter shooting 50%, 7 of 14. Clarkson kicks to Dunn. It's deflected. Pass to Williams. To the paint. Here's Gilgis Alexander. And he floats in for the easy two. Credit the assist on that one. You know, he was a non-factor in that first half, but now he's making up for lost time. After Clarkson. Here's Markinen. Outside Cullen. Shot clock at six. From 12 feet out. The putback. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. And the Jazz lead by 10. Feeling it tonight. Markinen has that scores gene. Once he gets on a roll, it looks effortless. Beyond the arc. It's hauled in by Dunn. Dunn's got four rebounds in this game. 
to the middle. Williams against Olenek. Poked away. Oh, and a fast break for Oklahoma City. And it's out of bounds. Oklahoma City able to retain possession here. Holmgren the pass to Gilgis Alexander. Shots good by Williams. Great job executing the offense. That pass on time and on point. Clarkson against Gilgis Alexander. Clarkson kicks to Dunn. Back to Clarkson. He gets that one to drop. He's now 5 of 12. Another good play. This is how they built the lead, calling on the right guys at the right time. The reason why they stayed aggressive and they have not let up this entire night. And at this point, I wouldn't expect them to. 131 left in the fourth. Done outside. Collins passes to Olenek. Markin and trying to break loose. And Olenek with the basket on the assist by Collins. I like that. Collins playing under control, reading the floor. Nice set up there. Here's Mann. Buries the long-range jumper. Mann's got 14 points here in the second half. Not just a knockdown shooter. He does a great job of finding space for his shot. And the Jazz call time here. They lead by nine. 112 left to play here in the fourth. And now we present our New Balance Player of the Game, Lowry Markinen. And the shooting percentage, how about all the way in the 60s, shows how deadly he can be when he's feeling it. And as locked in as he was, they were trying to feed him as much as possible. But he never got out of control. I mean, he kept his head and just stayed patient. He's really seemed to feed off the hostile environment he's been faced with tonight. And now in transition, here's Williams. Here we go. And with that shot, the Jazz lead is cut down now to just seven on the basket from Gilgis Alexander. And they definitely have the edge in those fast break points. They can't be afraid to keep pushing the basketball in transition because in the half-court set, they're struggling a little bit. Now, here's Clarkson, and he finishes it off with a one-handed jam. And sometimes we forget about Clarkson's vertical. He's more than happy to remind us on those throwdowns. Now a timeout called by Oklahoma City. They trail by nine. 43 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Outside, Gilgis Alexander. Williams. The shot's good. Gilgis Alexander making the play. Attacking the defense with the pass. Don't need to be a hero. Passes it to Horton Tucker. Here's Toscano. Now the pass to Horton Tucker. There's the three. The Thunder pull it in. Guys, let's just go ahead and call this one. It's over. They couldn't make enough plays when it mattered. Interesting game, though, in terms of some of the matchups. Pass to Toscano. So we see the Jazz get the win here. A truly gutsy performance away from home. You know, it really was. And Kevin, when this one was hanging in the balance late, they showed just what a tough-minded group they can be. And now let's go over to David Aldridge from the sideline for an interview with our player of the game. Hey, David. Thanks. Lori, strong start for the team. How did you keep that momentum going throughout the game? Yeah, I mean, we've had leads before this season that we blew, so we had that mindset that even if we're up, we're, we're still going to keep pushing, so that's what we did. You kept the pedal to the metal, man. Congrats on the win. Back to you. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that'll wrap it up, folks. For Greg Anthony, David Aldridge, Steve Smith, and the rest of our terrific 2K sports crew.
This is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. We'll see you later.